Don't hate. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Shan Ferdinand, Black Lion Live, here with Carrie Ferdinand. What's going on? We got Karima, Terry, hey, and Royce. Let's get into it. All right, let's crack into it today. Yeah, what did he just do? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's a Royceism. All right. First of all, go ahead and crack into it. We Hold need on. to make that a term, Royceism. Royceism, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I feel like if it's not Royceism, what is it? You know? Like, I'm not trying to go with the Bible or nothing, but you know. Let's 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 start What's happening because you'll be running out. Let's, <laughs> let's start something great, you know. But first thing I want to get in is how um, how everybody doing today, man. Let's go ahead and start with that man, Carrie. Okay, guys, we go we run down of last week. Carrie went on a little trip, you know. Carrie Carrie took a little time to himself, you know what I'm saying? Got a little, you know, wasn't really to myself. CEO but. fun. Well, I mean, when marriage, when two can become one, it's one. You know what I'm saying? So you guys went, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I didn't go with him. Nope. Right, she had her own trip. She had her own Wait, hot girl. Pause that, pause that, pause that, pause that. <laughs> Shan, Shan got turned for the weekend. Damn, Shan, okay, we both got and good stories should. this week. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, was at, I was looking at Terry right now. I was like, okay. All right, Kay, so what, um, what, you, what, you, what, you, what you do this weekend, big dog? All right, so myself and a couple of the, the, the fellas, we... uh. Got on our bikes. Um, a couple of my brothers rode down from uh, from Maryland. Myself from Virginia. My other partner from Virginia um, met one of our other brothers out in Georgia, and we rode into Tampa for a little fun in the sun to meet one of our other brothers. So it was a real good time. I'll probably talk about it a little bit later, but um, real good time. Shout out to Tampa, city of Tampa. In Tampa um, had a real good time. So you know. Okay. 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 Ish. Oh, and by the way, if you're a biker, um, FYI, I, I did the Iron Butt Challenge on the way back, so. Hey. What is the Iron Butt Challenge for people that are not bikers? So the Iron Butt Challenge is a 1,000 miles in less than 24 hours Shit. on your bike. So you have to have that seat time for 1,000 hours, I mean 1,000 miles. So that took about 12 hours to complete. We left at 7.02 in the morning. Um, what time we get in last night? Uh uh, well, we got home after midnight. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So basically, you just basically told the whole your booty show. Yeah, yeah. Listen, that that gets steel. real uncomfortable. Perky yeeks, you know what I'm saying? Um, you double cake on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, yeah, drinking pause, your tea in the hood. Pause. <laughs> Even Shan said pause on that one. And Shan normally don't hit you with the pause. I feel the type of way you're looking at my husband's butt. I wasn't looking at him. He kind of said he had the iron buns. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta go with it. But I'm just saying. <laughs> Iron glutes, bro. So, Shan, what did yes. you do this weekend? <laughs> um, I went to Atlanta and I had a good time. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Y'all ever been to an Atlanta Wine Fest? I watched Y'all ever been to a Wine Fest here? No. Yeah. Okay. Nothing to like. Like, okay. they, they get lit. Let me tell you. Like, okay. lit. Like, twerking and all of that. Like, Wine Fest is supposed to be like classic. No. Listen, Shan called me up. Yeah. Uh, first of all, first call, of all, bro. he called me. He yeah. FaceTimed me. Fa okay? No, it was a fake. You FaceTimed me. You FaceTimed me. Either way, right? She's out there lit and her homegirl's right there with her, right? So here's Shan and her homegirl's like, and then there's some other yeah. lady. There's another lady with her arm around my neck, and we dance. And I don't know who this lady is, but we having a good time. And listen, this is a wine thing, so there shout out to Atlanta wine. Minute. Any, anybody who gets Shan turned is is good. Uh, good for me. Had a yeah. good time. Had a good time. Had a real good time. Okay, oh Shan no, please. wait. She didn't tell you about the trap museum because there's something what? on her on. Um, Instagram or oh, yeah, yeah. I just saw it this morning where Shane was <laughs> uh, was trapping out. <laughs> they have a um a trap music museum in in Atlanta and it mm -hmm. just so the museum the purpose of the museum is to you know talk about the history of trap music from the beginning through the present date but they have like all these exhibits and they're playing trap music and then there's this one exhibit where uh they play trap music and you can dance with the little avatar and that's what he's talking about shout <laughs> so. uh, shout oh no there's more there's more because there was shan sent me a picture of her at the table 
uh, with cocaine and money and was like, <laughs> see what I'm doing. And Whoa. I was like, Listen, I was like, Shane, that don't even, that don't even fit your brain. What nobody, like, you know what I'm saying? You could go to court, you could be federally indicted and nobody, everybody be like, nah, that ain't, mm, that ain't real. That would be used against you in a court of law. But I had a good time. It was fun. Okay. Definitely got to go back. Okay, you seem like I had a very exhilarating weekend. Miss Rima Beeps, how was your weekend? What'd you call her? That's her name on TikTok. Rima Leaks? Rima Beeps. Okay. All right, um, my family came down from everywhere, actually. Uh, mostly New York. My cousin at that station at Langley with me, she, uh, she, what's it called, retired after 20 years in the Air Force. Shout out little sisters. Yeah. That was, it was Congrats eventful. to her. Definitely eventful. My grandma's birthday was on Sunday. Happy so we birthday. Took her out. What's she turned about, 32, 33? <laughs> the, 31 She's, and wholesome. There you go. Um, Did you say 31 and hold some? Yeah, 31 and hold some. I like it. Um, my grandfather's birthday was yesterday. Wow. Okay. Happy yeah, birthday so Sunday, to him. Sunday and Monday. Both, so they're together? 13th and the 14th. Okay, Leo. They're together? Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Shout, big shout so out. We uh, sent the balloons off for him because, you know, he, he up there. Oh. He up oh. there with the Lord, you know, about to come back and, you know, take over the earth. With my man Cam. Cam. Now with my man Cam <laughs> defending. So, yeah, that was, that was fun. Cam is her son. All right, Mr. Terry Mitchell, how you been feeling Dang, this weekend? Not the whole government had to throw it in there, you know. <laughs> um, I was feeling good. I was really busy, boring work stuff. I didn't really do much this weekend. So you was getting after that bag, yeah. That borrow a dollar. I can't get a dollar. You got real quiet just now. She said I she put that in a cup already. Get back. Huh? How many I'm gonna get back if I give you a dollar? None. That's why it's called give me oh, a nah. dollar. I didn't say lend me. What is it? He didn't say borrow. Jimmy got shot. Did I say it right? Mm. Uh, I don't know dollar. that one. That, that's one of them old terms. Yeah, Jimmy got shot. Yep. Jimmy got shot. Mm-mm. <laughs> Jimmy got oh, shot. I don't, I don't even understand up. that I one. I think that's a southern what? thing. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> say, give, give me a piece of candy. You say, give me got shot. Like, I don't, I don't like, understand. Give me his dad. Like, why? I'm not giving you nothing. Who Just na- like I didn't understand your joke last night. What did you do for the weekend? <laughs> All right, so as exhilarating as you guys' weekend was, wasn't as exhilarating for me. You know, this weekend got to got to freshen up with some movies. You know, um, watch the founder. You know what I'm saying? McDonald's movie. So I was oh, of, that's what you were talking about this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. got it. So yeah, I watched, you oh, know, Ray Croc, Ray little Ray little Ray Croc, little thief. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, watch yeah. the little founder. He's a thief. Oh, yeah. you, you never watched watch that. Oh, Ray Kroc took McDonald's from the McDonald's brothers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like, did he take it or was it mismarketed better, you know? He took it. it was, he was I, f- I feel pretty like. Pretty gangster about it. I feel like, you know, if you're not. Have, mar- y- have y'all watched it? No. So he divorced his wife real gangster like, too. Oh. Risen, risen the other dude, girl, crazy. Yeah, I'm like. Get married again, didn't he? Yeah, he, 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 took, he took somebody else's wife and <laughs> divorced Joan his Rock, own. Because they opened. Um, a, oh, a gym in Norfolk and Joan their names are on the building uh, Ray or whatever his name is and Joan so, so quick breakdown ladies my man was a, um, a traveling salesman and the wife was always complaining when he came home about how he's never home he's not there to do this then and the third so he got in bed with the McDonald's brothers and saw his, saw his money starting to come up <sighs> so right before right before he um, he made a big deal um, he went home. He was like, "Hey, you can have the house. I want a divorce. I'm gone." <laughs> Big and then, dog. And then, and then they then they up. ate dinner together. He said. <laughs> he said. He said. And then he deuced him. He and said, then he then then he took my man's girl at the same time, and he married her and stayed married to her the until McDonald's he passed. Brothers, girls. No, 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 no. Uh, some 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 other dude that wanted to buy into the McDonald's franchise. He said, "Um, uh, yeah, Ray Kroc was uh he was a thug, a dog." But you see, you can't take the business though. Can't have the business. You got anything else except the business, you know what I'm saying? But um, it was kind of cool. Now, ladies, I just go to show if, if you not ladies in here, but ladies in general, you know, if your man trying to work for something, bro, just stay down, man. Hold that wait, man down. Wait, wait a I think it's crazy. It depends. Now. I think what it's you crazy mean? how it a man gets some money, then he leave the one that stay down. No, but but, did, but why is she is complaining? It, is this what we want to do? <laughs> Let's get into it. <laughs> we want to explore this right it. now. He ain't got time for it. Listen, <laughs> all, all, I'm just gonna leave it like this. It's a reason why all superheroes are single.
Superman, Batman, That's Green Lantern, Miss Marvel. Um, well, it has that has nothing to do with that though. There's su- there's single Superman has he didn't get with uh, what's her name? Um, Superwoman. The other chick that worked in the Superwoman is Lex uh, Luthor. No, no, no. Superman's cousin Jane, whatever her name is. I don't remember her name, but they don't want to get close to people because the villains are going to come after the people who are closer closest to them and kill them. And then why you think same thing with Spider Man with all of them? Listen, listen. Imagine Batman having to to go home to Catwoman and explain where he been at all night. That has nothing to do with it. I feel like if you look at my movie, you saw the there was one couple that was like distinct. It was that one WandaVision and um. No, it wasn't her. It was the other two, like the little bow guy, and it was some other. So they were the, trash. They were trash. So hold on, hold on. So <laughs> then, remember, as soon as Tony Stark get um gets married and has a kid, he died. Just oh. saying. I mean, at some some point, the uh soup the superheroes have to hang up their capes. They desire companionship too. So you know, he died happy. Um, he I don't think he was happy, happy when he died. I think he died happy. He died saying he's Iron Man. But that's a whole different. Man. That's a whole different point. Anyway, but you know, let's let's <laughs> let's move on to the little. You know what I'm saying? Let's move on to the little. Let's break into that breakdown, Shan. Let's see, what you, let's see what it's talking about. Is it Shan or is it me? Shan. Hey. All right. So what we got what we got today, Shan. Today we have current events by Carrie. Hey. We have small business highlight. Who's, I, I forgot who's gonna do that. My bad. We got Meet the Brands by Terry. Yes. Okay, we got the real okay. estate highlight, but by none other. Um, and we have the TikTok blind review by Karima. Then we, at the end, we're gonna have questions and answers. The nice little Q&A. Um, hosted by Royce. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. So let's go ahead and crack up into that um that current events. Um, Mr. Ferdinand. All right. So current yours. events. Go ahead. Let's let's get that slide up there. All right. Because. I don't know if y'all remember um, a story about Michael Orr called Blindside. Yep, the movie. It's a movie where um, guy supposedly in the hood had a, had it had it rough. Um, a white family comes Sandra along. Sandra Bullock, right? Played by Sandra Bullock. They adopt this um, this young man, get him through college, high school, college, and because the movie portrayed, I don't know, I wasn't there, but the p- movie portrayed that um, Michael Orr wouldn't have made it, in so many words, without this family. Did he go on to play professional ball? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, Baltimore Raven, one of mm-hmm. the greatest. Yeah. Right? Ray Lewis. So, Blindside, the reason why it's called Blindside, his position on the field protect mm-hmm. the quarterback the most, right? So, in his time, his co- none of his quarterbacks ever got hurt, mm-hmm. right? Because if you're going to get injured, it's going to come from the blind side, right? Mm-hmm. That's the side that you don't see. So, a lot of quarterbacks ended up leaving the NFL because they got injured, mm-hmm. right? So, let's get to the T. All Got right. Into me. So, Michael Orr is now suing his uh, supposed foster family because mm-hmm. he found out that he was not adopted. He actually signed something called a Conso- conso- conservatorship. Which means that they get to make all the decisions for his money. So at 18, he thought that he was signing some paperwork saying that he's part of the family. Well, what really happened is the family took advantage, according to the lawsuit, the family took advantage of him financially because they know he was going to the NFL, this, that, and the third. So now he's in the NFL and they make this movie about him and he feels like that they took advantage of him, his name likeness, so that's when uh, NIL and all that, um, they took advantage of him. So this movie comes out and the family, the I'm going to spell it because I can't say it. T-U-O-H-Y-S. No? Okay. Uh-uh. So they made a deal for this movie that he didn't make not a dime on. Was, that's horrible. The movie grossed, how much y'all think? 40, 50. 300 million worldwide. <laughs> it was a good movie. It was a good movie. So 300 million worldwide. And they got... The father, the mother, and the other biological children made two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars per. Not to mention two point five percent each off the proceeds of the movie, which came up to seven point five million each. He didn't get anything. He didn't get a dollar. 
That's See? crazy. Right? So, like, what did we learn from that? I mean, like, so I'm there's saying, more. No, no, that's a good topic. But about in his in his thing, what did we learn from that? So there's more. Okay. Before we get to that, right? Okay. So he comes back and says that for the past 14 years, the portrayal of him, because if you watch the movie, it makes him look slow, mm -hmm. unintelligent. It makes him look like a big, dumb mm -hmm. um, athlete. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, he said that has probably been one of the worst things that's happened to him in his career. Mm -hmm. Not only his career, but um, for him psychologically, it's mm -hmm. put him in a depression because everybody thinks of him as slow. Now, mind you, the brother graduated from Ole Miss. Mm. So with that being said, um, it's horrible. Yeah, that's craziness. So the question is, what did we learn from this? Um, we need to make sure. So apparently, his agent was in on it too because his agent is also part of the family mm -hmm. or good friends with the family. Yeah. So what did we learn? We learned that um, as soon as you get in a um, place of position, you definitely need to hire your own lawyer and seek outside help. Oh, absolutely. Because but the, it's the ones closest to you. Unfortunately, in his situation, he was a minor. Well, he was 18 when he signed the contract. Oh, okay. So he's saying that he didn't know. And you could un understand that, you know, hey, this guy's taking it. This family's taking care of me. They treat me as one of their own. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're bringing me into their family. That's what I'm signing. And then next thing you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the same thing that we were just talking about, like, him not knowing how to market yourself. No. You know? Nah. It, it, it wasn't? It, it, nah, because this is, you got to think, Michael Orr is already retired. Mm -hmm. So this is going back before this whole marketing Yeah, no, that's, thing. What, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, back in the day, like, was it lack mm -hmm. of him not knowing? What, no, it, know? it was, I mean, today there's a lack of understanding about contracts and professionalism. So first thing you we would want to do is seek legal um, counsel. legal counsel mm -hmm. um, before moving into any contract, no matter how close they are to you. Because right now, um, if you made it, one of your family members may say, hey, I have a great investment. And we've all heard this before from Scottie Pippen. Um, some of the great greatest athletes were the worst business people because mm -hmm. they trusted the wrong people. Right. And and go ahead. I have you a question. Y'all, I could be wrong. Let me say that when I say this. But in the movie, didn't he, like, lack education or, like, had a So, so that, that's, that's the point um, we were talking about. The brother graduated Ole Miss. Mm. So they portrayed him as being slow, unintelligent in the movie, but he's oh. not really in real right. life. That's crazy. Right. Why do they do him like that? Dang. That's crazy. Right. So any other questions about that topic? Because I just feel like the, um, if you have a child or if you're somebody getting into the industry, it's bad enough that you have to be the best at what you do. So if you're a vide videographer, if you are like your talent, you know what I'm saying? Football player, photographer, your talent at mm -hmm. that moment, but you still have to understand the business of what's going Absolutely. on. So some of the greats right now, or some of the, um, some famous people are going through this right now. Megan Thee Meg, um, Britney Spear Spears. So this she whole conversation, whole whole, what was it? Um, the conservatorship. Right. So this is basically saying that you are not responsible for anything. Your for, own life. Right. Uh, so so same thing with um, Wendy Williams. She's going through that right now where she can't she can't touch any money unless the bank authorizes it. Mm. Damn. So this type of thing can happen to anybody at, um, at different points. They tried to do it to Kanye. They tried to hit Kanye with it. The Kardashians tried to hit Ye with it. So this is something like people just like sneaking in, like so like with Britney Spears, Kanye, and um, Wendy Williams. It be it be it is because of uh, their mental state. Like if mm -hmm. somebody feels like you're not mentally competent to make decisions for yourself, then they would seek out a conservatorship to make decisions for you. But in mm -hmm, his instance, crazy. I guess. Well, he was 18, so that's probably mm -hmm. so. Okay. That's cool. And then you got to figure somebody slid you, uh, slid you a piece of paper, somebody that you trust and says, sign this. This is what it's for. You're probably not going to read it. And you probably don't even understand it at that him. point. Yep. Right. No, oh, so yeah, that's I, I mean, it's just sad, man. Back in the day, they didn't it's get that. It's a little that. suspicious. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> you don't find that suspicious. So it's not just, so what, the point of what I'm saying is not just back in the day. It currently happens to people today. It just doesn't hit the headlines unless it's somebody rich and famous, mm -hmm. which leads me to the next topic. All right. 
So Illinois laws um, are now protecting oh, child that. influencers. Mm -hmm. Drop that. Shout out Illinois. So this is one, <laughs> one state that is taking the lead saying, so California already has something um, out there saying, hey, uh, we want to take care of these minors because what happened back in the day, and Shan's going to talk about um, a similar incident with, um, what's your what's your topic on? Um, what's the family? Um, the JonBenet Ramsey. John, so the Ramsey family, they were making money off their daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll be surprised how parents take money and, then and they, spend they it, it in the yeah. child or the children's uh, a lot of star uh children stars or star children's whatever it is child stars child stars mm -hmm. they don't make any money because the parents have spent it all so yep. they they burnt through money and then the child at 18 through hey, whatever they don't have any money that money's gone they made they made millions but it's gone yeah mm. so that being said illinois is coming coming here and saying hey you know what if you're under the age of 18 I don't care if you're on your parents' podcast or whatever your influence the situation is. What you're going to do is you're going to take um, a certain amount of income and you're going to put that in a trust to be available to them at 18. It's, it's non-negotiable. It's happening. And then we got Washington State that's not too far behind. I think that's okay. a good thing. That's good. Although, oh, I thought that said 100% of money in trust. Okay. No, a percentage of whatever is earned. That makes um, sense. Doesn't doesn't state what how much, but just know that these children are starting to be protected, which I Good. think is a great thing. That's awesome. Because since child labor laws, we really haven't seen anything to really protect children labor wise. And some of these child influencers, they make millions. Do like well, so. think about it. Think about and and this is this is the kicker, right? Think about the Pampers kid. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, the kids in commercials that made a killing um it, it's it's stuff that you you look at but you don't really think of so yeah. these these child influencers they're definitely they definitely need protection absolutely yeah, especially and it's sad that you gotta protect your kids from your parents mm -hmm. uh. all right and then lastly a virginia legend. Uh, legend shout out and big salute to magoo aka uh, melvin barcliffe mr Bagoo passes at age 50 um heart attack but he'll Damn. he'll be missed all right yeah. so yeah 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 he was young and he was definitely a big influence to the virginia hip-hop scene Absolutely. and hip-hop in general so um magoo and timberland they put out a lot of good music yep they put out a lot of good music a lot of those famous beats and mm -hmm. a lot of good stuff so a shout out to him if you got an opportunity you've never heard any of the music make sure you download it at least um pay homage to the brother by at least listening to his legacy which is his music so, and that is all i got that's our that's my wrap up yes, that was a cool little you know cool little joint for the uh you know for the podcast now let's go ahead and break into that uh that small business highlight for this week uh so this week you know, this this week we got the small business highlight of uh the little horn in them. Mission Barbecue. We go get um Shan, you ate okay, so we had so let me let me back up. We had Shan Shan went Well, y'all brought it back to me. Okay, well Shan didn't go, but we brought it back to Shan. <laughs> Shan ate. Um me, Karima, Terry, we went to Mission Barbecue. Um, I'm gonna let them talk on it a little bit, and, I'll, and then I'll give a little final. So, question. real quick, which Mission Barbecue to be uh, more specific? Ah, uh, the Newport News Mission Barbecue. I mean, there's, I mean, Jefferson N Avenue. Jefferson Avenue. Newport yeah. News is always fire, so I just want to make sure you. Hey, hey my fault. We ain't, we ain't talking about the boys cross order. We ain't talking about gotcha. the boys up north. Newport News seven five seven. Facts. You know what I'm saying? O over over the lake, over the lake, not under the lake, over the lake. You know what I'm saying? Is there is there a lake? What is, what is he talking about? <laughs> Let's get into it. Royceism, mm -hmm. Royce got it. So Terry, how did you feel about it? How did you how did you like Mission Barbecue? How did you feel about um, the? I kind of like it for it to be a franchise that's selling barbecue. I think it's pretty good. Um, yeah, the meat was falling off the bone. So yeah, <laughs> that meat was falling. I mean, off the tell bone. us what you got. Like, you oh, know. okay, I think I had. Got, I had got. Um, if you don't you remember, call? it can't the, be that good. I got the ribs. Okay. I was trying to. Um, so you got the smacking ribs. Yes, and it was okay. falling off the bone, y'all. Smacking. And then I got some collard greens and some, some collard greens and some um, cornbread, and it was good. And it was all properly seasoned. Yes, yeah, surprisingly, yes. Okay, okay, okay. 
Yeah, it was good. Karima, what you have? I had the pulled pork. I had pulled pork, uh, cornbread, and baked beans. Was it seasoned properly? Yes. <laughs> Listen, y'all, she got a whole smile going, so it must have been fire. So, like, for like, hold on, let's talk about, hold on, Shan, go ahead about your meal, what you had. Oh, I had the um, barbecue, the pulled chicken. Okay. A sandwich. Little simp. Sandwich. The simp. And I had baked beans, which were delicious. It was extravagance. Delicious. So. Extravagance from the Upper Chef's West kiss. Side. Mm -hmm. Campbell's chicken noodle soup. Better than that. What you rate them uh, I give them like a, a seven. Seven. <clears throat> seven, Rima, seven, Rima, what? seven. Seven out, out of ten. ten. Mm -hmm. Out of ten, Rima. Uh, six out of ten. I got to try again. Ooh, okay, <laughs> bye. So, bye. all right. So, so what? Why a six? Uh, I don't think I'm a. I don't think I'm a barbecue person. I got I, it. I, I might not just be a barbecue person. Okay. 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 Terry. I'm gonna give them an eight, a solid eight. I love barbecue, and I grew up with like Southern food. My family from the South, so I think they did pretty good. What's the spot down the street um, in Yorktown? The barbecue spot. I don't know the name. Of whoa, it. whoa! We not about you to cross right on the corner. Advertise. No, no, no. Oh, so oh, you talking about um, ooh, country? Oh. So there's another barbecue spot barbecue. that I'm just gonna say that you should try. It's in Yorktown, Ken. When I think of it, I'm, I'll, I'll let you know. So Terry, make sure you check that out. If you gave them an eight and they're a franchise, you should check out this other spot. They're, the, they're. Okay. Okay. Oh my goodness. So what about the what about the service? How you feel about the service? Oh yeah, the service. They was it's veteran owned. Hey, shout that. out. Yeah, shout out to all the vets. Especially army. And, um. <laughs> And uh, Watson say when we came in, we felt so welcome. They gave us actually me and Karima got a, um, a free strawberry shortcake, so they were super sweet, just really professional. So yeah. Okay. County you, Grill. Out of 10. County Grill. So try make, County Grill. Make they sure you cool. Check out County Grill. Okay. I feel like they WPI. Yorktown. Are they in York, Yorktown. Are they W? Don't get because I went to County Grill. There are two now. There's one in I think it's Hampton. Mm -hmm. When you Google it, make sure you go to the one in Yorktown because when I was working, we had a luncheon at County Grill. Everybody went to the one in Yorktown, and I was the only one that went to the one in Hampton. So that's a sad day, bro. Let's go through our emotional damage. Right? I like that guy. It was. Bro. It was. Bro. <laughs> Anyways. Um, service one out of ten, Rima. Uh, ten out of ten for service. They um, yes. I had mentioned that was my first time there. They gave me a free sandwich to come back again. Oh. Uh, like I said, uh, they broke down everything. Um, kind of gave me a little, what's what on the menu, what's good, what's bad. Um, you know, they talked to us. There was somebody there by the drinks, just cleaning, and he was like, hey. Um, yes, yes, yes. Like this, this sauce is good, and I, I hope you have a, a fantastic day. He was just oh. like super nice. Hey, big shout out to Newport News Mission but, Barbecue. Yeah, because yeah. and listen, nice. the reason why I have to say the location is because all establishments aren't built the same. They might have the same name because we've all been to that Chick Fil A that wasn't so mm. professional. They don't do ice cream <laughs> cones. They don't. They they don't say my pleasure. Like wait a minute, sir. Well, say my pleasure. I'll be coming for Chick Fil A now. That's my spot. Um, I'm gonna eat <laughs> off that plate all day, all day, all Chick Fil A. I keep telling y'all, Chick Fil A is not that good. Whatever. Okay. We're, okay. That's all. Like yes. Yes. I put. <laughs> there's this TikTok. Watch TikTok. Just look it up. Chick Fil A macaroni and cheese. There's this dish you mix, mix the macaroni and cheese, the waffle fries, the chicken nuggets, I've seen it. and then you put the there's some type of sauce. I can't remember the sauce. Mix it all up, man. Schmacking, <laughs> schmacking like that. And they strawberry or? shakes. They're the best. Ain't lemonade. Nobody topping it. Yes, lemonade. But in the waffle famous, fries. And the famous words of justice. They don't do ice cream cones. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes down to location again because yeah, we yes. went to another one in Chesapeake and they had the cones. Mm. Makes sense. Right. Right. So the one in Yorktown, they give you the cup. They give False the advertisement. Cup. Yeah. <laughs> sad, sad day, sad day, sad day. But yeah, food was definitely very good for Mission Barbecue. Um, definitely A1 service. You know what I'm saying? If I had to get the food, falling off the chicken fall off the bone, you usually don't get that anywhere. Um the macaroni and cheese was was, 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 I don't even macaroni and cheese. I don't even my grandma macaroni and cheese. I ate that macaroni and cheese and it was good. 
<laughs> mac and cheese, mac and cheese. Um, then you have um, then you had the collard greens. You know, um, nice little meat. We did get on about the carrots, so that that's a that's a negative yeah. point. Royce, you had a good piece of meat. Pause. Let's okay. get on. You know what I'm saying. Let's, <laughs> let's let's get on. You know what I'm saying. Let's let's stay on track. Let's stay, let's get back on the railroads, Thomas. Um, uh, you know, uh, definitely had. Dang, you messed me up with the question. De- on, definitely man. had some good meat. You I got carrot. you. Carrots. <laughs> the carrots. The carrots threw me off a little bit. It gave me um WPR, but you know um. What is that, Royce? Uh, but you know, at the end of the day. We, we I don't know, but WPI? we on um, same thing as WPI, but just with R. I don't know what WPI is. Racism. <laughs> Anyways, um, they didn't give me a strawberry shortcake, so that's a point five. Cause I, I'm, 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 I'm partial military too. My, what? my granddaddy on my mama's side was military, so I'm military oh. too. So you know, I still got the card, but um, yeah. So listen, you I almost called you Monica. Number. WPI let is me finish Worcester my, let me, let me finish my statement. Institute. Restaurant food was um 8.5 out of 10. And then, you know, um service was 10 out of 10. Dude at the restaurant, you know, she gave me the breakdown on with how they cook the chicken, what they cook the chicken with, and gave some free stuff. So, definitely, you know, good. Anybody else got any final takes got the meats. <laughs> oh, my. I didn't eat Arby's one time, so let's not. <laughs> Royce, Royce with the meats. You can't say that. That was just like Shane calling the BBC, bro. <laughs> Can't say that, <laughs> yo. That <laughs> threw me off, bro. I'm still so confused. <laughs> I see whole price index. I see Worcester oh, Polytechnic. WPR. Yeah, I don't even in Urban Dictionary. What is WPR? We'll, we'll resurface that. Um, can, can, can you give us at least oh, the first word? No. We'll resurface that. Don't say it uh, on, on live. We'll resurface. We'll see you resurface that after okay, the, the live R? restaurant. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. You still, you still stretch that neck carry. Yeah. I'm, listen, I'm not, my mind old man powers, lagging. I'm, I'm not even my my brain power is not even there. Okay, that's funny. I guess. So now we about to go ahead and get into um meet, the meet they brand. You know. So first of all, let's get into that carry. Um, Terry, I apologize. Talk about that for me. Okay, y'all. What's up? I'm Terry with Black Lion. So, my event that caught my eye was the wildfires in Maui, which is crazy. So, I had a couple of questions for um, Carrie and Shan. So, pertaining to real estate, how um, how can natural disasters like this affect the housing market? So, that's a great question. So, natural disasters like this or... This one particularly, either or. Yeah, I would say. All right, both. so the re- the reason why is because I learned a lot being in Tampa this weekend. So, for example, in Florida, I believe the beginning of next year or June of next year, something, everybody's going to be required to have flood insurance. Every homeowner in Florida is going to have um, home and in- well, flood insurance, right? So, when we talk natural disasters, we're looking at situations where it's a drag on the economy. So if you look at the pictures here, you got to think this is billions of dollars worth of uh, relief effort, uh, constru- um, construction, reconstruction, deconstruction. Um, there's billions here that we're looking at. And then we're also looking at, especially when we talk wildfires, you're also talking about um, environmental hazards. So it's a, it's a lot that goes into this because then all the good chemicals we put on the ground to put the fire out. So there's a lot going on here. And I would say that it's gonna take an area like this um, a good 10 years to, to recover. recover. Yep. So when we talk about what it does to the real estate market, it is really depresses the area very quickly because nobody plans for this. And when they do, they probably still, that's still a lot of money you gotta put out to bring your city or town back or just that area. And then the years that go behind um, the environment because it's going to take the environment years to come back. Mm-hmm. So Okay, you kind of tapped in on my next question. Um, my next question was what typically happens with a property after it's been destroyed? Like, Hopefully, um, it has to be demolished. Well, hopefully they had insurance. That's the first. Yeah. That's the first thing. Um, so while we're even talking about it, not just insurance, the right type of insurance, because if you live, 
you live somewhere where you don't you're not required flood insurance and then all of a sudden one of these disasters comes through tidal wave something comes through guess what your insurance company is not gonna cover your insurance company is not gonna cover it and you are out of a home so, but they still have a mortgage right mm -hmm. so first things first is still have a mortgage first things first is hopefully there's home insurance um that's where i would start at man i just got lost in thoughts but, about but, um, everything with properties that have been destroyed by fire um, oftentimes there are special processes that have to take place if you want to um, rehab or rebuild and a lot of times it's less expensive just to demolish the whole thing and to start over from scratch yeah depending on the extent of the fire but when you're looking at something like this because smoke damage is is hard to get mm -hmm. out Definitely. did that answer the question because yeah they answered my question so how does just specifically like looking at this how does this fire damage um affects the return of investment on the buyer side i mean it, i'm gonna hate to say this out loud but depending on the insurance somebody probably made out especially if they were behind or whatever um this might have helped somebody out mm -hmm. um but that's not that's not really where like that's a small minority as far as a majority, uh, this is just all bad. Uh, we're talking about you're losing property, you lose. And think about the things that you have in your home that just can't ever be replaced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of things, um, mementos, this, that, and a third. And then what we're glossing over is the fact that there's probably a lot of loss of life. I don't know. Um, there's like a hundred when I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> Right. Because there's a certain population of people that for some reason, well, they decide to stay so that population decides to stay because they think it's not going to be that bad and then there's another set of population that can't leave for whatever reason yeah. being sick elderly or what have you or just not knowing um being because they're in isolation um it's all around for the most part it is unfortunate and there's no real real roi like there's no rate of return it's just a loss mm -hmm. okay so how can real estate benefit from situations like this. I just read an article and um, I, I don't know how I feel about it, but it was talking about how this is an opportunity for investors mm -hmm. at this point to go in and rebuild yeah. um, houses. I mean, if you want to build um, subdivisions and sell them, you know, if you want to buy, um, build properties and rent them out, like it is a, a large opportunity for investors to go in and make a big return. Yeah, if you have capital, this is a great time to jump in there and um make some money um from rehabbing i mean there's, there's and it's not and this is the great part if you're a small business owner this is a great time to jump in because there's so many services needed right now absolutely um it's it's a great opportunity for real estate as a whole but you understand this real estate game right here is going to be a long play Especially if somebody, a, a major investor is coming in here, this is a long play. This is not for your overnight delivery guy or your overnight yeah. uh, flipper, your one or two uh, flipping guys. This is this is somebody who really knows what they're doing and they understand the landscape. But there's a lot of money to be made right there. Yeah. Okay. Especially okay. considering the location. Right. So there's money to be made um, from the cleanup. There's money to be made. Um, to provide an infrastructure. There's going to be government grants, loans, federal money thrown at it um, because they're going to want to bring this city town back up as fast as possible. So it's going to be a lot of money thrown out there. Um, yeah. It's a definitely a great opportunity. Like Kerry mentioned, um, he mentioned small businesses. You find a lot of small businesses that actually pop up and get government grants, like cleaning up. I mean, because they're, they're going to throw money at this relief effort. So okay we just had wildfire <laughs> questions oh yeah that was my segment okay little joint look yeah little quick little meet the brain you know what i'm saying y'all dropped some gems though they definitely did i'm not gonna lie hold on and where's this at this is maui maui mm -hmm. oh it's tons of money right there to be made mm -hmm. because there, there was somebody around there just waiting for that land to free up because it's not like there's a lot Oprah. of property out there <laughs> what Oprah. You, 
Ooh. it's a joke. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot of money to be made, especially in Maui. Yeah, 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 definitely. But um, hey, I'm a conspiracy, so like, listen, I wonder who lit the match. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the whole is well, so that, that it's funny you bring that up. So in California, um, you know when they have those those fires in California, because California always got something going on, right? Mm-hmm. The affluent divisions they pay private companies to come save their um, their assets. They pay a lot oh, of money, wow. so that's not uncommon. Where well, they have an army of people to save their assets. So people risking Are, their lives for their assets. Yeah, and they probably don't have none. I mean, we we uh, mostly were in the military here, so we understand that concept. Oh, true. That's true. <clears throat> hey, that's, hey, I gotta clap it up for you guys. Good little segment. First time. That's the, that's a new segment from us guys it's called Meet the Brand. Um, we'll be looking all to see that it's really about the brand and or like touch on real estate topics from today, like that are happening right now, and taking them and. Shooting them to our agents and kind of getting our our consultants. I apologize, and um, have them answer them the best way they can for my clients. So yeah, that's definitely a, a cop up for them. But next thing, let's go ahead and get into <laughs> is that real estate highlight. So we are another one hosted by the great and the infamous Shan, the real boss of Black Lion. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Most hey, death, most death. Okay, hey Shanathan. Yeah, Shannon two times. Um, Shan run, Shan run. Ricky, Shan. Um, <laughs> Royce has be. Right. I understand. I understand the. I understand the reference, but I don't understand. Shan run. Shan run. So yeah. you got. So you got to feel out. You got realize. I said feel out. <laughs> you got to realize. Shan is the one that's gonna tell you. She sees the dude trying to get you. You know how they say, Ricky, she sees the problem I before it happens. Saying, okay. So she's telling you, run. Okay. Get out of there. Now she's too late. <laughs> you on the ground. Ricky, Rick. Because she. What, 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 what they say? Um, Give me got shot. Ricky got shot. So okay, it's not a, you, you just lost <laughs> me. <laughs> so you real estate highlights. Straight to it. <laughs> So I read this article about the house that belongs to John Benet Ramsey. I don't know if y'all know anything about John Benet Ramsey. Nay. It was because we were young when that. Yeah, happened. Yeah, I was very young, and I <laughs> I just you know kind of brushed it off when I was young. Well, there was a little six year old John Benet Ramsey. Her parents put her in these beauty pageants, and you know she had a big name. Well, right after Christmas of like 1996, the parents received this ransom note saying, um, asking for like $118,000 and saying if they didn't get give pay the money, then their daughter would be killed. And she was missing. She came up. Anyway, I was about to hop on my soapbox about that. She came up missing. Um, the murder was never solved. They never found out who murdered John Benet Ramsey, but I mean, it was a long process. Um, people suspected the parents of killing her. People suspected her little brother who was nine at the time of killing her. Um, just craziness, but hold on. Side note. Mm -hmm. Are they related to Gordon Ramsey? No. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) They might be. I don't know. But their house <clears throat> is currently listed on the market um, for $6.95 million. It's in Boulder, Colorado. Um, and I just wanted to touch a little bit on this is a stigmatized property. A stigmatized property is a, pro- a home that may be displeasing to buyers for other reasons besides its physical condition. And I made that note because mm-hmm. this, although this house has been listed, it has not been sold. Um, I think, you know, because of the whole, you know, murder and everything that took place in the house, people don't want to purchase it. But um, the house has changed hands and a street, street address since, since then. In 2001, the address changed from 755 15th Street to 749 15th Street. In 2004, it was purchased for $105 million by its current, current owner, Miller, Milliner and his wife, Milliner, Carol Milliner. Um, it has been listed a handful of times since the milliners owned it, but it hasn't sold. 
Um, it's on Zillow currently for $6.95 million. It's 7,240 square feet and it's surrounded by um, luxury homes. The Ramseys purchased the house in 1994 for $500,000. So just, it, it has pr appreciated in value significantly. It went from $500,000 to $6.95 million, probably also because of all the hype surrounding the house. Um, in 1998, after John Benet Ramsey's murder, because they found her in the house, they sold it to investors for uh, $650,000. And then um, a lot of people ask about property taxes. Mm. The property taxes on this $6.5 million home last year, um, they were $19,405. So I thought that was a really cool article um, about a house that a lot of people know about, a situation that a lot of people know about. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do some quick math. What's that commission check looking like? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so for every $1 million, uh, mm -hmm. The average commission is thirty thousand mm. dollars, so seven million thirty is two hundred and ten thousand dollars, or eighteen million, huh? Eighteen million for a commission? No, no, eighteen hundred eighteen thousand. Is not two hundred and ten thousand? I don't know. No. Yeah, it's if it's six, it's eighteen. If it's seven, um, two two hundred and ten thousand dollars. But yeah. That's a lot so while money. we're talking about sti stigma properties. stigmatized properties, right? There are a lot of properties out there. It's, it's weird. People have like weird fetishes. Mm -hmm. So they go one of two ways, right? So when you have people that's been murdered in houses, depending on how big the murder was, there's like a whole cult of people out there mm -hmm. that want these properties, right? Mm -hmm. So that could drive the property up. Yeah. Or you could actually push somebody out i'm trying to remember the name of the movie where um it was a real it was a real house because they actually had to change the address because people would drive by it so many times is it the chainsaw massacre mm -mm. Mm. i think it's oh, that one yeah. yeah 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 so that one they actually changed it so they actually changed the address on the on the property mm -hmm. so people could stop coming by there mm -hmm. texas chainsaw massacre that was another good one but you could literally just drive that that was like on a back road in Texas. I drove by that one on accident all the time. Mm. Um, but things like that, it, it, it's just crazy. Um, the weirder the story is, yeah. the worse it is. And it could stick, it just doesn't stigmatize the property. It could actually hurt the neighborhood or the block, depending oh, on how bad the story is. But there's some houses out there that are just famous for no reason. Um, the Freddy Krueger house, mm -hmm. the child, um, y'all remember, um, what was it Home Alone? Oh, oh yeah, Kruger yeah. was real. Yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Don't a, go to sleep. Well, no, not that part. He was a teacher. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> no, no. In the movie. Yeah, that one. That one just sold. The house off of Friday. Did it really? Didn't it, don't they got a new Friday coming oh, yeah, out? That, that house just sold. just sold. Um, that house just sold. Um, then Full House. That, oh, the house sold too. Which was funny about Full House because the house that they put on. Um, when it first came out in, on uh -huh. the intro, mm -hmm. that was in the same house that they recorded in. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened to the instrument? What? Let me find out. The good okay. guy, the Boy, Nickelodeon was playing drink repeatedly. It's in my brain, show. you know? Yeah. But a side note. <laughs> right. But then the ones that, so you know, in Virginia real estate, we're not allowed to say if a house has been haunted or somebody died of uh, HIV, HIV or yeah. uh, we Why? can't say stuff like that. The world? Does it stigmatize the house? So we're not allowed to talk about if we, HIV. I want to know, bro. I don't want to. Well, why? Well, that has a lot to do with um, HIPAA laws. Yeah. Hey, like if I touch a surgeon, yeah. put my mouth in my mouth, and I get HIV, what happen? It, it does not work, work like, like that. that. Yeah. And and that and that's the reason why. Yeah. yeah. Or we can't say that there is a um, gay couple or a right. black family right. or a jewish family mm -hmm. because there are certain biases or have been certain biases in the past and you don't want to stigmatize the house because listen all house wants to do is just hold you hug exactly. you and love you and love you and help you create and memory you some money mm -hmm. well the house doesn't want to do that the house just wants to take care of you. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever been to a haunted house like have you ever been in the house doing hold on pause it you don't have to pause it have y'all ever been in the house not pause the whole thing but oh. just, just pause the music have have you ever been in a house where it's like this is a side note? 
like stuff been moving around and it's been haunted. Like, have you ever? Yes. Yeah. No, listen, I mean like real estate. Listen, real, like, no, no, no. I'm gonna give you a real estate story. Like, okay, cool. Shannon and I was in a house one time and <laughs> she found a hidden door oh. going down in the cellar. Right. Oh, so we're going down the cellar. In a, no, down were we coming there? up? We, we were coming down. up. I thought we were going down. No, we were coming up. Okay. And Shan touched me, and I thought that something touched something something <laughs> touched me, and I want y'all to know. I he tell y'all, leave me I tell y'all house. every time Carrie's a punk. <laughs> don't expect Carrie to save you. I was almost out. <laughs> Shan almost got left down in that See house with whatever it was. <laughs> Dang, so we're really haunted. I don't know, but I mean, I feel like when you go in certain houses, you feel a like you feel love yeah. or you can feel yes something off. Yeah, definitely. My first apartment, y'all, is they I stay like right down the street from the graveyard like Ooh. in a funeral um what's the people called that like do the dead body? yes them and uh, two stories my sister was outside and it was pitch black like when you walk up to the house you don't see nothing no street lights nothing and she said it was a lady with no face mm. just white <laughs> come to her like screaming like i need a ride i need a ride and i was like oh my god and she just like ran to the house <laughs> and what? then i had went to sleep y'all. Sneaking in on shit. this like supernatural stuff and i went to sleep and um i was facing my wall and like i had a dream that i can see everything that was behind me but i was facing the wall and it was like this black Oh, no. yes. And that was my last day. Like, I was like, I got to go. <laughs> but yet. the whole, like, vibe, how he was saying, like, you feel it. Like, mm-hmm. that's how I felt in that apartment. I was yeah. like, uh uh-uh. uh. That's what my first apartment, bro. That's, that's joint got to be right. Oh, my God. Like, I'm not, I'm not about to be out here. <laughs> I'm gonna sage me, give me a little cross yes. or something. I don't know about no sage and cross. They it might bring work. them to you. Oh, now I'm gonna leave alone then. <laughs> I ain't gonna touch it then. I'm gonna leave it alone. No, I man, but like, okay, I'm gonna tell you, okay, this be like quick. Just quick, quick, two minutes, 20 second story. It's about to get weird. No, listen. So, so listen. I walk in the house, right? This is not about Bloody Mary. No, 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 no. Okay. No, I walk in the house, right? So, you know, I'm you dressed up and stuff. About Mary J. Yeah. I'm dr- I mean, everybody dressed up and stuff. I'm like, I don't know why we dressed up, you know? But we walk into the house and it's a guy in the cage, like shaking the cage. Like, who we walking through it? You know, like it's a path to walk through the house. Shaking the cage. I'm like, what? Shaking the- I don't know where he came from. Like, we in the house, he's shaking the cage. There's a lady, she yelling like, die, you know, like, and stuff like that. I'm like, whose house was this? I don't know. We just, we drove to the house. It's like a whole bunch of people at the house. Was this a dream? No, like, it's like, it's <laughs> real life. Like, we, I was really there. Who were you with? Some friends, you know, we, we went into, it was a, it was a house. Y'all just drove to a house. a house? Like, randomly? Like You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, so listen, we walking in, it's a whole, it's like a whole bunch of stuff going on in the house, you know what I'm saying? You get out the house, and we go home. <laughs> Now all this now 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 was it a haunted house? I mean, it did take place on October thirty first, and we oh wasn't my. costumes. I'm so down with you. So I'm you so know, done. I mean, it could have, it so could have. Right. I'm down with yes, you. Yes, I got that joke off. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. She said Way it. She said it. I looked at him like, shut up. Right. Gave me the stink eye, like, girl. <laughs> nah, man. But uh, anyways, it's twenty second story. But uh, let's get back to this. Jump back to this. Real estate highlight. Yeah, so, yeah, this is uh, an example of a stigmatized property. Um, But it actually stigmatizes property in a good way because the the house increased significantly in value. Um, Well, good and bad because nobody has purchased it, so. Okay. Well, you know, Michael Jordan's house, I think, just got sold or is still in the market. I can't remember, but he's been trying to sell that house for years. Michael Jordan? Yeah. What happened in his house? Um, Michael Jordan, the uh, Chicago house. He He decked it out. Yeah, it was nice. That's the one that um, he won the championships in and oh, everything. Okay. Um, got the twenty three on there. I thought it. Was, mm-hmm. I, I thought it would have sold a long I mean, that, time ago. That's your bleed greatness. I was but the house has been on the market for years. Wow. I think it either just sold it at um, a slight loss, mm-hmm. or I think it's still on the market. I can't remember. Matter of fact, let's Google. Why do you guys think people want like celebrity houses just because they live there? Because people are weird. Yeah, because I'm like I'm not understanding. I'm like. It's a house, right? I don't know. People have, like Carrie said, people have weird fetishes. So I'm gonna give a lot of well, houses. Some people are like collectors. Cause that's so why I thought might, the house. Yeah. So if you got money, <laughs> like oh, that's true. You know what I'm saying? When you got money, what you collect is different than what you know right. the rest of us collect. You know, I'm around here collecting nickels. 
You know what I'm saying? They collecting whole yachts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We we hit different. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Neverland. Mm-hmm. The ranch. Yep. And then you gotta think like Elvis Presley, Elvis Presley's home mm-hmm. in Graceland mm-hmm. is still making money. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. That's is that all the um. That's that's it. That's all I really say. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so that was a good little real estate highlights. Go to applause it up for sharing. You know what I'm saying? First, a little real estate highlight. You know, kind of got a little bit of knowledge out of that. But now, so real quick, Michael Jordan's house has been on the market for ten years. For how much? Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, I thought it should be greatness. I thought oh, it's wow. probably expensive though. Yeah, how much is it? Forty million. Forty million. Forty million. Oh, which. Really, it's not that much. No, because like there are people buying more expensive houses. Right. Because mm-hmm. he like so, had full basketball court to most of. Shoot the uh, in selling Tampa, they had somebody to buy a seventy-five million dollar house. Maybe it's Do not. Maybe it's the location to update it. Maybe it's not. It might not. Updated. Might be retro, retrograde. And it also might be one of those situations where his neighbors' houses are not. Mm, um, yeah. That because if my house is one million, his house is one million. You ain't gonna put a right. fifty thousand dollar house in between. Ah, uh, yeah. okay, all right, sense. right? Or vice versa. You know, everybody else has a fifty thousand dollar house, and here you come with this uh fourteen million dollar house. Typically, what are we doing? When houses don't move, they're overpriced. Mm-hmm. So Makes sense. Okay. All right. I I, I know. I don't want to live. Um, in a certain area, you know, I want to. If I pay fourteen million dollars, typically I mean, you want to have something with in common with your neighbors. Right. Typically, you're usually the social, uh, same social economic class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because y'all can't talk about the same stuff, or like somebody could be in your house. Mm-hmm. Or if 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 I'm retired and everybody's going to work, well, I'm staying in that neighborhood. I need to go somewhere else where everybody else retired. Exactly. We all play golf and stuff, and because we having two different conversations. What you do today? Uh, Staying home in my boxes, eating Doritos, and drinking um. How you doing? Fanta. Fanta all day. How do you go to Use it work. I mean, we're hitting different, so. Well, yeah, all right, man. I mean, I feel like it would be a flex. So I said that'd be a curse because you get the crib. Yeah. You know, like I mean, hit. no, because think about it. That's why you have your 55 and older communities as well. They try yeah. to be around their own people. And not how them loud noises and kids right. and around House everywhere. parties, break in. So, I'm sorry. That, that was Michael Jordan's home for. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> No drink going on. Uh, so now everybody getting oh, to. Hold on, last part about it. I just, <laughs> I just, I just read this. He, another thing, he's paying over a hundred thousand dollars in uh, annual property taxes. So that might be. You better sell that. House. That 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 might be another reason why. And, and, and guess what? Them, them Charlotte Hornets ain't paying good enough. So he got a. He sold crazy. them. I know he did. I would too. They trash. They're not good. But I mean, nobody getting to no basketball talk, man. No football talk. Hold on. Wait. One, one more thing. NFL is back. If you want to get in my fantasy league, hit me up. We hundred dollars, you know, get you right. But um, <laughs> anyways, um, let's go ahead and get into Rima's TikTok bar review. So Rima babes, um, explain that to him. All right, we're gonna explain the rules real quick. You're right. Um, behind each one of these hexagons, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, each one of these hexagons, <laughs> there is a link to a TikTok. Um, yeah. We're gonna do this every week. Y'all gonna pick one and we just gonna review it blindly. Let's get it. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna give the audience, which is they in there, we're gonna give them 10 seconds to see if they wanna pick one. If they don't pick one, you guys go ahead and pick one. So, oh, we got one, we got one. Somebody, so yell it out, Rima. Uh, second from the right. Second from the right. Oh, just- so this one, now playing. No, cause he he would be. Let us know if we own it. So we, oh crap, I'm wrong mic. Right. So we yeah. thinking this one. Oh, they said the top one. So this one, this one, the top one. All right, cool. Boo, Roy. <laughs> no, chill out. <laughs> and and, and Shane, do you do you want to say it? Cause I want to keep jumping back. What? Oh, about Jordan. Yeah. Oh, so. Just real quick, Michael Jordan's house did just sell for six point eight two million dollars. That was updated in June of this year. So it was listed for fourteen. Mm-hmm. Somebody Ooh. came up. Ooh. Not the price cut. 
can't see that. Boo! <laughs> hey, it's, it's somebody it's, boo this man. It's a new series, new series, new series, new series, new series, new series, new series. New series. Chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out. New series. All right, so we got. Let's see if we're gonna link that. So today. You struggling? A little bit, a little bit. You know. This is why you open every door at a showing. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I'm so like, I don't know if he missed it. Go back to it. Go back. Oh, that's a good one. This is why you open every door at a showing. <laughs> what happened, bro? <laughs> Y'all don't see it? What? I don't see it. All right, go, go back. Break us down. This is why you open every Pause it when I tell you pause. All right. Pause. Is the flooring? Is it the carbon looks, fiber? This looks like different colors. Wall? Is it location, location, location? Is it the cabinet? Is it the mirror? Is this paper towel? That used to be the the uh, pantry. Oh, I knew the location of it was Wait, a little weird. That, that, so that used to be the pantry that they put the bathroom in. Wow. I knew that location was That's a little crazy. weird. I want to see that again. So that might have been a like a waiter's um a butler's closet. Butler's yeah. closet that they turned into a, a toilet because look at yeah. When she opened the door, I thought it would butler's be butler's closet. What's that? Because that's typically. It's like um an area where what's a butler's closet? Uh, it's like an area you have like a sink, it's pretty much like a bar, mm -hmm. and they call it a butler's closet because if you have like a maid or a butler, that's where they go to prepare all the things that yeah, they're gonna like, serve. Yeah, so that's like a prep station. So yeah. between the kitchen and the mm -hmm. dining room, they put a um they put a space to you know for service. Yeah. Damn, they got they get numb in it. Ah. But so but you so close to the kitchen. Right. So imagine you somebody you cooking. What do you like to eat? What's your favorite meal? Uh, let's go with spaghetti. Spaghetti. Just what's yours? Yeah. The stove is on the other side of the So so right. So what That's what do you what do you what, do you, what do you, what's your favorite dish? Me pot roast. What is it? Pot roast. Pot roast. What's yours? I'm with spaghetti. spaghetti. Royce, what's yours? Hmm. What's your, what's your favorite you? meal? Chick, shake Chinese food. Okay, <laughs> so so we got Chinese food, pot roast, and Chinese food. You know what I'm saying? Some curry chicken roti, and my man goes back there and busts a load on you in the middle of you cooking. Oh, that's horrible! You cannot eliminate those two smells together. That is true. That's horrible. That's horrible. It's in the kitchen. Mm. Yeah. And it's like it, right outside that door is. And then you got to so figure the refrigerator. It's right there. there. Oh. So that's it's that's nasty. Oh, it's sanitary as long as you wash your hands. So, but, but I do agree with her about opening every door because <laughs> we once had a showing. Um, there, were, the house had a an attached garage, but then there was a detached garage, and so we went to the detached garage and opened the door. So the old, previous owner had passed away, right? And so they were trying to sell the house because the owner died. We opened the door. There was like a brand new Hellcat parked in the um, oh, garage. Oh, facts. Yeah, yeah. And so we're like, does a Hellcat convey with the house? You know, since the owner is dead. Listen, we almost wrote a car? contract on the house just for the car. We put the Hellcat in the in the um, contract. Did they get it? No. Uh, we didn't get the house. So Bobby, be mad I while I watched the Hellcat. Y'all tweeted. That's all we want. Listen, when we say brand new, it was I'm brand talking about spanking. It, it still had the sticker on uh -huh. the car. It had. Like, yeah. what's the what's the legality on it? Probably stolen. Right? It probably owns. Like, so no, no. So here's to the bank still. Doesn't maybe the, because so it still belongs to the bank. Then so here here's how I looked at it, right? Because as you walk through the house, you saw that this person was a big NASCAR guy, right? Mm -hmm. So you figure in your in your older age, you're oh, thinking to yourself, yeah. you, you think to yourself, let me go ahead and buy my dream car. I would, right? If I know I'm about to go, that. that that Porsche is going to be sitting in that garage. I'm going to have that Porsche GT sitting in my garage. You know what I'm saying? And when I say that car was brand new, I'm talking about- It looked like it had never been driven. Listen, the keys were in there. Mm hmm Oh, it was ready. Mm hmm So how come they didn't get it, though? The we, house? Well, y'all didn't we, get it. We, 
We so, we did. We were trying to buy it. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I guess they accepted somebody else's offer. Dang. Uh, so I would have heard. I want that. Would that, that, that be a fixture or no personal property? I'm sorry, or real property? What do you think? I mean, we know the question. We know the answer. It's personal property all day, every day. Okay. So how could you like negotiate that like in the contract with the So house? here's here's the deal. In Virginia, you cannot negotiate anything but the property. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? Because you can't put a boat, a car or something On in the loan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Because that that's how the bank is looking at it. It's like mm-hmm. we're not financing a house and a car. We're right. just financing a house. However, there's a way that you could structure a deal outside Okay. Um, outside of the contract with another contract mm-hmm. um, and it's negotiated that way but anything that's going to the um, to the bank for review um, you can't negotiate it that way we tried it okay man I wonder what that offer was like oh no you can't drop names they didn't hear. Oh, I think Nikki. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh, Uh huh. Yeah, we go with Nikki. Uh, uh, you did, I don't did, care. Was that was that the name? <laughs> I just, I uh-huh. was just, no, I was no. guessing. Was, was that her name? name? No, was no, name? no, no. Uh, no, I don't think that was her name. That wasn't the name. But no, wait, that wasn't her you name. Remember the situation? Uh huh. So like, mm-hmm. You know that uh-huh. <laughs> a way of doing it. Absolutely. So you um that we worked out that outside of the contract. Like, okay. hey, I had a conversation with the agent. Hey. Can y'all leave this, 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 and that? Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah. So. But you can't write it in the contract mm-hmm. unless it's something like a refrigerator or something like that. You you can't put anything so else. Like real property stuff. Um, well, a refrigerator can be considered a uh, personal property. With, with my home, I got the washer and the dryer. Okay. And mm-hmm. um, they left... Uh, the patio furniture mm-hmm. i also got like a power washer a, ma- a lo- lawn mower all the stuff in the shed i got everything so in the shed so there there are ways to get it yes right because of it's on your property mm-hmm. now now we started talking di- uh, talking different ways um and it's funny about that Hellcat because later on that month we went to another property in Hampton and they had a, um, a old school Mercedes in there. Mm-hmm. And like, okay. and what's funny is these houses, cool. like when you wanted a house, you didn't expect much. Mm-hmm. And but in both situations, we were just about to leave, but I'm always curious about the garage. It's like, hey, let's go in the garage. Mm-hmm. Most people's like, a garage is a garage is a garage. Until you go in there, you find you a car. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like, me personally, I would have crashed out for it. You would have did what? Buildings, everything would be gone. Everything would be gone. I can't hear him. Right. What do you say? Nothing. It's a racism. <laughs> yeah, racism. I would have said, forget the car, forget the house, forget where I'm gonna sleep tonight, forget where I'm gonna eat tomorrow. I'm getting a Hellcat. I already got the Hellcat in the crib. I just left it out. You would have took it? That's me though. I was oh. like, did y'all <laughs> want it bad enough? You would have been, you know. I mean, you don't want to jail, Royce. Enjoy it very long. How would I went to jail for like crashing out? First off, your realtor saw you. No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not gonna steal it. Uh, like I was gonna put all everything up up for auction and like. That is stealing it. You can't take. No, not that car. My you stuff. saying that you're gonna do what you gotta do my to buy assets. the house? Oh, I'll, you would. Oh, you'd auction off your stuff. To I'll get put up all money. my assets to, be, to get the house because that offer for the Hellcat with the house bundle, bro. That like whatever they put in was crazy. So here's what happens, right? So when we have estate sales, that's actually typical to go in there because the family hasn't been there or whoever's selling the house, the executor. So a lot of times they're they're sight unseen Mm -hmm. and they're selling the house. So that is typical. But yeah, open every door. Open every door, you know, and that's just like in life, you know, open every door. In every way, you know, like don't never leave no doors closed. How do you not open a door in every way? Like uh, how many, how many mean, different ways? I don't think you mean it literally. I think he's speaking metaphorically. No, I mean literally. I mean, oh, like, okay. Well, never mind, man. I was trying to help you out. See, Roy, open there was a pause. There's a pause. Listen, because sometimes you gotta open the door. <laughs> sometimes the door not open the right way. You gotta open it. You gotta unscrew the door from the hinge, turn the door upside down, and unload open it from the bottom. Anyway, you gotta open the door. Open the door because if you don't open some doors, like I'm gonna tell them a story. I'm gonna 
anyways. All right. So the first question is saying, how long does it take to buy a house or oh, buy a yeah. home? So after being pre-approved and you actually find the property that you actually want, um, from the time your offer gets accepted to closing could be anywhere from 30 to 45 days. If you're in the Hampton Roads area, I would say put put at least 90 days into the process. Okay. Time, plan for at least 90 days. Okay. You want to ask a question? I like Betty Boop. Agree. Right. Next right. question right. is, is did that. what is a seller's market? Ooh. MBA. A seller's market is. is. Hold on, hold on. Applause. What you say, Carrie? MBA. Okay. <laughs> so, um, a soon to be doctorate. My bad. A seller's market. Internet when, money. When we, when we talk about seller's market, um, let's think about supply and demand, right? Um, when supply is low and demand is high, the seller, the the seller or the manufacturer of that particular product or whatever, they benefit because they can inc increase the price of whatever that is. So it's essentially the same thing with the seller's market. Inventory is low. Um, there is a demand of buyers. Um, there are very few houses and a whole lot of buyers. So a seller can increase the, the price of their house because they know that somebody is going to buy it because people need a place to stay. Essentially, that's that's the short version. Bottom, yeah, <laughs> bottom line, there's more de more demand on a house than, than it typically would. Absolutely. Okay, okay. Um, someone wants to know, do I have to come out of pocket to sell my home? It depends. Um, quick answer, yes. Um, but you look at it that coming out of your net proceeds. So if you're gonna um if you wanna grow, say eighty thousand, um, and you do repairs, this, that, and a third, you may walk away with seventy thousand. So that's just a good idea. There are costs associated with selling your house, absolutely. And I say it depends because well, in that instance I was thinking that you're essentially I mean Essentially, you're not really coming out of pocket because you're going to recoup that money when you sell the house and get the profit back. But there are situations where people, they owe more on their house than what they can sell it for. And so if they choose to move forward with a the sale, then they'll they'll have to come out of pocket the difference when they sell the house. So that's why I said it, it depends. Okay. Well, the last question is, what is a typical day in the life of a agent? Sheesh. Sheesh. <laughs> what kind of agent? Real estate agent. Yeah, no, no. So you have high performing agents, you have average mm -hmm. agents, and you have agents that can't cut the mustard. So let's talk about your high performing agent. Your high performing agent is usually up early in the morning. They're in the office. They're working um, on their business, not in their business. So they're coming in, they're planning. They have um, their days planned out. Yeah, they they are absolute planners. They have to the micro in place. Um, okay, sounds like working, me. Right, so they're working on their, <laughs> they're working on systems and processes. They are preparing their leads. They are looking at their lead capture. They're making sure that they're mailers. So the first part of the day is usually about planning. Then there's a switch when you're working in your business, and now you're starting to contact people. Um, you're going on your showings and you're doing those sort of things. So your cash producing activities. So high performers work on their cash producing activities mm -hmm. and planning for the cash producing activities. Mm -hmm. Your average agents are um, pushing it part time. Mm -hmm. They um, they don't really have a schedule. They don't treat it like a nine Business. to five. Mm -hmm. um, they come in, um, you know, they lurk around a little bit. Is it lurk or lurch? Lurch. lurch. They lurch Lurk. around. You should know that word very yeah. well. They they lurch around a little bit. They don't really um they don't know the difference between working on their business or working in their business. Um, so they're typically the ones that feel like they have a lot a lot going on, but they don't really have anything going on because mm -hmm. they don't get a lot of results out of their cash producing activity. Then you have the last agent that can't cut the mustard, where they dress up very well and they sit in the office and take Instagram posts and sit there and they tell you that they're working, but they're just there. Well, Instagram can be very effective. Right, so for your top for your top producer, <laughs> absolutely. Even for your middle person, but for the person that's not cutting the mustard, it's, uh, they're the ones that don't last in the business You can long. cut mustard? Yeah, man. What? I was gonna say that the top <laughs> producer also is 
out in the field moving and shaking shaking hands rubbing elbows and kissing babies people yeah they 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 have a social battery like so when, when you ask so that would, that was a great question but it depends on what type of agent you're talking about and they can also go follow the black line TikTok and tune in to see also Rima B. I don't know you guys TikTok names <laughs> to see a day in the life as a real estate agent. Absolutely. I need to post some day in the life videos. I don't have any, but I need to do that. That was it? That was the last question? That was that was the last question. Yeah. Creamy, you don't have any questions? All right. So let's go ahead and start our casting crew. You know what I'm saying? Let's give it up for Kerry Ferdinand, owner of Black Lion Realty, you know, coming out and supporting, coming out and throwing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was weak. Coming out and um, putting on, you know what I'm saying? Then you got Shane. Then you got Shane. Then you got Shane Epps Ferdinand, um, CFO, Black Lion Fer- you know, Black Lion Realty, you know, pop it up. Is it, is it weird that we clap for ourselves? Then you got Kareem Benjamin. <laughs> then you got Kareem Benjamin from Real Estate Agent. Um, they got Terry right. Mitchell, PA, and assistant. What's, what's PA? Uh-uh, Period. Uh-uh, uh-uh. We're gonna have to redo that. What's PA? First of all, don't get thank you. Production thank assistant. You, thank you. So I, like, need the, what's up, what's up? I need you to screen. Production assistant. Oh, okay. yeah, so I, I need my on. little screen, Royce. Uh, oh, my fault. Uh, Terry emotional Mitchell. damage. Terry okay. Mitchell <laughs> for PA and assistant. Can, can we get the emotional damage? <laughs> did that hurt her? That did. That, that went right through. Yeah. That went right through. And then we can, uh, you know what I'm saying? Then we're going to give it up for 212 Multimedia, which I can't see at that at the bottom. Um, I'll show you on the screen, though. We'll give it for 212 Multimedia, the production company, you know what I'm saying, for putting all this on. You know what hey, I'm saying? Why, why is Carrie Ferdinand? That's what I just said. Emotional damage. <laughs> it don't matter for emotional damage. If, if this emotional damage ain't get done, it wouldn't have got done. You know what I'm saying? Period. You said what, Carrie? About the... What I was saying was make sure you like, follow Black Line Realty and all the agents in Black Line Realty. Um, I will say that these are really some high spirited agents. They care more about your bottom line than they do about making commission. Um, I know that some of our agents has talked themselves out of more deals than actually put themselves in deals because they care about the client's well-being. And you don't see that a lot. And it's not just because they're a Black Line agent. It's because they choose um they choose professionalism over dollars and i respect that about every black line agent so it's don't not because they're a black line agent it's because they're an agent at black line don't get it twisted we don't work for free all right so um this shout out is- shout out to all the agents um and if you're in the williamsburg um area make sure you ride by and check out abe's brand new um what his, do you call billboard. It? his billboard his Oh, uh, I like it. Says you better call Abe. Better call Abe. All right, Abraham Lincoln. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, shout out to Jordan. He's really been picking it up here lately. Uh, my guy Gary been out there uh, doing his thing. Um, Eli, Karima, you know, Zani. Oh, big shout out to my man Zani. Zani uh, Zulu. Is that what y'all call him? Well, that's what we call my dad, but he's named after my dad. So y'all call him Zulu? Zulu. Zach or Zulu? Hey, Zani going to Greater Heights, man. Right. I like that. <laughs> so shout out to all of them. Make sure you like, follow again, and any questions, stop in, ask one of any one of these outstanding agents. He's amazing consultant. And we'll get you done. Get saying. her done. And um I'm gonna watch Royce go across the street and get the meats. <laughs> Why was he like and it, why is he in my head? Because that's why I was, I, was about to, I was about to do some subway, bro. Like, come on, man. Anyways, bro. <laughs> I was. It was either subway or Hardy's, bro. I was going to either one and get the chicken tenders, you know. But, um. I told you he get the meats. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Um, The game and, um, you know, the game ain't free. The searches ain't free. But, you know, it's it's, it's, it's viable. Viable game. Viable knowledge, you know. And, um, Tutor Multimedia, you know. Viable, you know. Production for the future, you know, man. Wrap we next that shit up. up, B. You know what I'm saying? Hater, <laughs> hater. You know, it's a hater. You know, but um. Anyways, we gonna get out y'all here. 
know what I'm saying? Everybody say, everybody say bye. Bye.